Hello and welcome to this time of encouragement. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in, for watching, because I just know that you're going to be encouraged during this time. For it is through the encouragement of the scriptures that we receive hope, goodness, gentleness, peace, joy, self-control, wonderful heavenly riches from God. So, uh, let's get ready. If you have your Bible, please grab it. Please hold it in your hands as we identify, as we take ownership, possession of God's Word, the eternal Word of God. In faith, if you would say these words after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today I will be taught the Word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. The Lord's going to bless this time. We are in the Gospel of Luke, continuing the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21. Chapter 21, let's pick it up in verse 1. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. You might picture a large offering box, and on the top of this uh, box, a horn, a horn-shaped opening, and that's where you put um, your money in. And then you can also imagine and picture a line being formed, and uh, in this line are the rich putting in their gifts, and you can hear them dropping their coins. You know, and, and the the longer the sound, the more money you know is being dropped in, and in that line also is is a poor widow. You might imagine her maybe in the back of the line waiting her turn. But Jesus watched. He watched the rich, and he knew that they gave out of their abundance. Jesus watched, and he watched the poor widow, and and he knew she gave out of her poverty. So by human standards, two small copper coins is, is really nothing insignificant compared to uh, silver, gold, or those more precious uh, minerals, right? The poor widow and her two small copper coins, that's equivalent to like 2% of a, of a day's wages. a small small amount very small tiny amount the poor widow may have been devoured by the scribes remember Jesus said that the scribes devour widows houses could be that's why Jesus has picked her out to show her heart right she put in more because she gave all that she had. The rich gave out of their abundance. How much did they hold back? What a question to ask, right? How much did they hold back? If God has given us wealth and riches, we too should ask, how much am I holding back? How much am I holding back? all that God has given me. Jesus didn't say that she put in more than some of them. No, he said that she put in more than all of them. All of them put together. God is not looking at the amount. He's looking at the heart, right? He's not uh, uh, impressed with the amount. He sees her heart of faith, her heart of trust, her heart of of sacrifice. God is not impressed 
with the amount of the of what the rich people are putting in. He'd rather he'd rather them keep it than than put on a show. They make a, a a loud scene of how much they're dropping into the, the the offering box. Consider your motive when you give. Consider your motive when you give. Give cheerfully, right? Not to impress God, not to show off, but we neither give grudgingly, reluctantly, or out of pressure. For God loves a cheerful giver. We check our motives. We give with a cheerful heart. We trust in the Lord, knowing that he will provide. Verse 5, And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adored with noble stones and offerings, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. The temple was grand, built originally by Zerubbabel, uh, which, which has stood for about a thousand years. Right, Herod, King Herod, uh, has invested, has restored, and expanded the the temple uh, originally built by Zerubbabel. It needed much, much restoration. Huge stones laid upon one another. Right, one stone weighing as much as a hundred and eighty tons. The marble, the marble stone, uh, made its appearance of the temple bright white. As far as the eye could see, you see this structure of white marble, brilliantly white, right? Large uh, uh, marble pillars reach toward the sky. The top. Uh, the temple adored with gold around the surrounding structure covered with gold plates shining from long distance so looking at this gold would be blinding like the sun like looking at a mirror and the sun uh, shining off that mirror into your eyes would be blinding inside you might imagine walking inside of this temple uh, inside are these holy objects made out of gold, the table of showbread, the lampstand, the altar of incense, and in the most holy place, the Ark of the Covenant. The layout, right, the pattern of which this temple was built is modeled after uh, the tabernacle, the tent in the wilderness, but that tent is modeled after the throne of God. The presence of God is in this temple. And people look at it and say, how grand this temple is. Then Jesus says, now one stone will be left upon another. And he was right. In the year 70 AD, the Roman general Titus and his army destroyed the temple along with the city. The temple was set on fire. The gold melted. And, and, and it went through the cracks of the stone, right? And each stone was removed to get the gold. Jesus' prophecy was fulfilled. Not one stone left upon another. To this day, Locating the original site of the temple is difficult because every stone was removed. And some of the stones you can still see today, uh, different the site in uh, Jerusalem. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? When is this 
going to happen what you just said. The very first thing that Jesus says is do not be led astray. Do not be deceived for many will come in my name, will come in the name of the Christ claiming to be me. Don't be worried about the date. Be on the lookout for those who are claiming to be me and they are not me. Today we have false Christs claiming to be divine, special, different, unique, one of a kind, blessed from heaven. But there is only one true son of God and he is at the right hand of God in glory and majesty. These false Christ are more concerned with self-glory than giving glory to God. Often they lead people to death, suffering, torment. Before the second coming of Christ, there will be many false Christs, even the one who's called the Antichrist. And he will deceive many, be a great leader, but will deceive many. He himself will claim to be God. Jesus prophesied before the end, before the end comes, we will hear of wars and tumults. So this, this time period will consist, will constantly consist of wars and tumults. Do not be terrified. These things must first take place going to keep happening. Look at verse 10, continuing. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness settle it therefore in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer for i will give you a mouth uh, wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict you will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends and some of you they will put to death you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. There will be no peace on earth, lasting, sustainable peace, until the Prince of Peace comes. Jesus said, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. The earth will travail like a woman in labor about to give birth. She travails. The earth will travail. There will be great earthquake, famines and pestilence, terrors and great signs from heaven. Jesus prophesied unrest and distress tribulation, not peace on earth. That's not what he said. The book of Revelation has much to say about these last days, these end, the end of times, the last seven years to be more precise. The church was born out of persecution and persecution will continue for the followers of Christ. Notice Jesus says, they, this will be your opportunity to bear witness what the enemy thinks is going to defeat the church and the followers of Christ. No, it's going to be an opportunity to give witness for Christ. Peter was a witness. John was a witness. And so was Paul and many others. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and witness for Jesus Christ before rulers, kings, and governors. Trust in God to give you the words to say. That's what we learn. The Holy Spirit will recall into remembrance the message of the gospel at the right time. Those times of, of stress and anxiety. I don't know what I'm going to say, Lord. He will speak through you and give you the right words to say. 
passion and power. Praise be to God. In the last days, there will be this family betrayal. Alliances and allegiances have been decided to be for Jesus Christ, to be for God's word, is to make your choice to choose your side. When you choose the name of Jesus, you choose your side. You choose your affiliation and your alliance. Jesus told us you will be hated for my name's sake. He said that, and it happens. Even today, the world hates the name of Jesus because he is the light of the world. Jesus draws the line in the sand, exposing sins and calling the world to choose him, to believe in him. And to not is to reject him. Jesus made a promise, whosoever believes in me will not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't say we would never die. This body will die. We may die, but our souls will never perish. We will live on for eternity. Endure during these times. Don't give up, run the race, be patient, pray, trust, listen to the Spirit, and follow. Finish the race. This life is fleeting. Here today, with no promise of tomorrow, each day we live, praise God, each day we draw closer and closer to eternity with God. Tomorrow could be the day you are with God forever. If we consider the great tribulation as written in the book of Revelation, great endurance is required to get through it. Making it to the end will require the hand of God because it's going to be the worst times on earth. Endure. Yet we are all called to endure, to hold fast to the word of God, and to do not, do not deny the name of Jesus. Endure. Believe the Bible. Endure. Do not disaffiliate. Do not reject. Do not deny the name of Jesus. Verse 20, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and let those who are inside the city depart and let those who are out in the, out in the country enter it for these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days. For there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against its people, this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and let, be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Has, in history, if we look back through the, the lens of history, has Jerusalem been surrounded by armies like Jesus said? Yes. Yes. Has desolation come, like Jesus has said? Yes. Did people run? The Christians did. When they saw this happening, the Christians did. And many survived by fleeing over uh, on the other side of the Jordan River because they believed Jesus. But many Jews did not run. Then comes General Titus with a Roman army and he saw to it that no one could flee the city of Jerusalem because they built a barricade around the city. Historians and history records that 1.1 million Jews died during that siege. 97,000 taken captive. It was, it's, was written and recorded that mothers ate their babies and people starved. They couldn't escape. The prophecy 
is only partially fulfilled. The destruction of Jerusalem occurred in the year 70 AD along with the temple, which fits to what Jesus is saying, yet this is still future. Yet this is still to come. Why do I say that? In the Gospel of Matthew, in the book of Daniel, in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, in John's writing called the book of Revelation, all teach that Jesus said, this is still to come. This is still to come. We are living in the times of the Gentiles. The church age, some call it. It's the age of the church. When the children of Israel rejected Jesus as the Messiah, God purposed to bring the Gentiles into his family through Christ. It was a mystery that was revealed. The Gentiles will be fellow heirs. They will be fellow partakers. They will receive the promise and the riches through Christ. Hallelujah. The times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled when the great tribulation begins, when the great tribulation begins, even now we see that Israel is trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. We see that. God will see to it that Jerusalem is no longer trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. They will resume complete authority when the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, God will once again give his attention to calling the children of Israel to believe in Jesus Christ, protecting them, and he will fulfill the promises that he made to Abraham, Isaac, J Jacob, David. All those promises are still in effect. Verse 25, and there will be signs in the sun and the moon and stars and on earth, distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. The end of the Great Tribulation is foretold here. The Great Tribulation will be like nothing the world has ever seen or will ever see. Look, the sun, the moon, the stars will give signs like nothing we've ever seen. Look, the earth will be in distress like nothing seen before look the heavens will be shaken like nothing that has ever happened before look the son of man is coming in a cloud with power and great glory the second coming of christ remember the great tribulation is not for the church it is not for the body of christ it is not for the bride of christ the Great Tribulation is the last days purposed by God for the children of Israel, the world, and the Lord's enemies. That's good news. According to Revelation, the end will come when the beast, also known as the Antichrist, he leads an army against God to fight God. Imagine that. Jesus returns with the hosts of heaven, all his saints and angelic hosts. And, and, and with the power of his word, he defeats the beast and takes captive Satan. Not much of a battle, not much of a war. Jesus comes back and ends it with his word. When Jesus returns, he will judge the nations and he will bring the kingdom of God to earth. 
That's what the book of Revelation tells us. All in Christ who are counted worthy will reign with him in the kingdom to come. Verse 29, and he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This parable, like other parables, is a story intended to teach spiritual truth. So the with parables, there's these uh, common references with uh, a direct association to spiritual truth. The fig tree, when we look back at the Old Testament, represents Israel, okay? Israel will be a tree, a fig tree once again. We can see that today. And for a long time, for centuries, that was not the case. They were dispersed. Dispersed. For a very long time. Not until 1948 that they return and, and form to restore back a nation, the nation of Israel, right? And not until a little bit further down the road, about 1968, they resumed authority of Jerusalem. The fig tree, Israel is showing leaf, is showing signs of growth, right? Leaves show growth. Leaves show that uh, the, the, the fruit's coming. Right? The, the seasons are changing. The fruit's coming. The, the fig tree is designed and intended to produce fruit. So we look. And we see. But only when they believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, will there be fruit. They can show leaf and growth, but the fruit comes when they believe. The coming of Jesus is near because Israel is a sign to watch for. Is a sign. Uh, Israel is a sign, and the temple is a sign. Daniel, Matthew, and the book of Revelation all predict the temple being rebuilt. And for those who, those children of Israel that are alive, when they see these signs that we just read through, when they see the times of the Gentiles and they will not pass until the prophecies spoken by Jesus are fulfilled. There are different ways to interpret that, but that one seems to be a a solid interpretation. Those alive that see these signs, that see the end of the Gentiles uh, trampling underfoot Jerusalem, when see that they will uh, um, will not pass. They will not pass until the words of Jesus are fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away, which is impossible because God is in control and nothing can overcome Him and His plans. Heaven and earth will pass away before the eternal word of Jesus passes away. In other words, it's not going to happen. The words of Jesus are true, dependable, reliable, faithful, and trustworthy. He's trying to tell us what I have said will happen. And we look at what happened in the year 70 AD, and we know what he says is true. We may not have every single detail of the plan, but he's given us the signs.
Verse 34 in closing, But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that they come upon you suddenly like a trap, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. And every day he was talking in the temple. But at night he went out and lodged on the mount called Olivet, and early in the morning all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Before the cross, Jesus predicts the end. Before the cross, Jesus predicts the end. He tells us so we know. He wants us to know. We are told so that we keep watch. Prophecy does that. Gives us signs to watch for. So that we are not caught off guard. Oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. No, Jesus told us we are to live with a sense of urgency. Jesus said he was coming back. I know he's coming back. I must continue to be faithful to what he has called me to do, right? The world says, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we're going to die. Just live it up. Jesus says, watch yourselves. Give your heart to God. Stay awake, right? Pray and look for my return. The future does not terrify us because we are safe and secure in the hands of the, of the Father Almighty and the Son of God. You got God's hand right here and you got the hand of the Son of God right here. Two of the most powerful hands in the universe work together to protect you and to lovingly guide you. Praise be to God. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you show us through the widow's offering that you look at the heart. You look at the sacrifice. Help us to consider what we're holding back and to check our motives so that we give cheerfully. You foretold the destruction of the temple and what you said was true. You foretold wars and persecution and what you said is true and we should not worry because you will give us the words to speak before rulers and kings and governors and leaders. You foretold the destruction of Jerusalem. With precision and accuracy, we can trust your word. You give us signs to, to be watchful for. Help us to stay awake, to pray, to put our faith and trust in you. We look forward to your coming. You will come to bring life and the kingdom of God. You give us the lesson of the fig tree. Another sign to be watchful for the nation of Israel, Jerusalem, and the temple. You tell us to watch ourselves. You tell us that for our hearts not to grow weary and, and not to be drunk and, and caring for this life. Help us, O oh God. To, to watch and to pray. To believe in your words. To, to know that your return is on the horizon. Help us not to just be hearers of your word, but to be doers of your word. To have faith in you. To follow you in faith. To obey you in faith. to think like you, to feel like you, and to act like you. Glory be to God. Thank you for your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.